Hello and welcome back to Adventure All The Way. Ooh, I'm Emma and I'm a mum of three from the UK and we are just at the beginning of our UK adoption journey. Um, so this is my weekly adoption vlog talking about where we are in the process and how I'm feeling and how the kids and Phil are feeling all that kind of stuff so we can look back on it in years to come and so our future child can look back on it in years to come as well. Now you'll have to excuse the swelling on my face. Um, I have a dental abscess down here in my gum, so there is some swelling. Um, I'm on antibiotics, and it's and I'm I've now finally got a um, sedation assessment appointment to go under sedation and have it taken out. Um, yeah, I'm not looking forward to that, but hopefully that will be done before the adoption process is done, so I can then I don't have to potentially deal with this like during intros or something like that because that would be a pigging nightmare. Um, it's bad enough looking after the three kids I've got when I have a dental abscess, but paracetamol seems to be helping now. The antibiotics are clearly doing their job. The swelling's not come down yet, but yeah, it's not hot. Last night I felt like my face was on fire, so that's a good thing. Um, not much has changed from this point um, with uh, where we are in the process. We're still in stage one, still waiting for all our references to come back. I think we're just waiting on two people to put in their references. Um, that they have very busy lives, so I guess that they've just been we've just been shoved to the back of the pile um, a little bit. And yes, yeah, so we're waiting for those. I'm still waiting for our DBS checks. I just wanted to go through um, one of the things we said was um, what we did to prepare to start to, before we got to this point. So we decided that we wanted to embark on the adoption process about two years ago. We had been kind of flirting with the idea since. Charles was a baby. So Charles is nine and a half, he'll be 10 in January, and we've been kind of flirting with the idea since then. We always knew that we wanted to adopt. Um, now was the time, and when Albert was two, I'd started to feel a bit broody, and I, I had, or by the time Charles was two, I already had Bessie, and by the time Bessie was two, it was like a few months later when I felt pregnant with Albert, so two years old is kind of like my broody, broody phase. Um, and, um, we had a couple of interviews and it was it was just like not the right time for us. We realised that the adoption agency said that and um, the agency we were now said we wouldn't speak to you until your child is three and at the time he was two. So I was like, okay, fair enough. And then now he's, then he was four and we were like, okay, um, or he was coming up for like, let's talk to this agency that we didn't go through last time. And, um, and yeah, so we went through, we're going through them now. And it's all going well so far. Fingers crossed. That's wood. Um, but what we did to prepare in those two years, I really had a dramatic transformation between what I thought, what I felt, what I believed about adoption. Not just about adoption. Hey, Love you too, babe. Um, about adoption, but also how I felt about birth parents, how I felt about um, name changing, how I felt about how I felt and what I knew about attachment. Um, and all of this got the, all of those little things like trauma and all that sort of stuff. I realised, like, okay, you know, I can either use this two years, I can kind of grumble and be like, oh my gosh, we're gonna have to wait all this time, or I can really prepare and make myself the very best adoptive parent I can be. Like, do all of the preparation, do do so much as much preparation as I can to to really be the best adoptive parent, to be the best asset I can be for our adoption agency when we eventually get there, and then be the best parent that I can possibly be, and the best parent that Phil can possibly be. I don't know why I'm gesturing, he's not even here. <laughs> Him, at work. Um, so we got books, and because some of the books are really expensive, I just bought a book, I, like, I would buy two books that were recommended to me, I would read them, and then I would buy another two, and then like it would slowly over the few, like every couple of months, I would buy another little stack of books and I would read them. And so, the read there's a you know I can put together a reading list. Actually, I have put over the reading list, um, and I'll stick it. Um, I, I think I'll probably stick a. I'll just put them in the description rather than link you somewhere else. I'll just put them in the description. Um, so you can just type that into Google and um, into Google, into Amazon or something like that. That's where I got all of mine from, on Amazon. And then you can um, buy them yourself if you want to, if you're thinking about it. Um, yeah, so all of those books are in the description. Those are the ones I um, 
I read and or read to Phil because Phil's not a big reader so um and he struggles to take information being read like there's a kind of a query whether he has dyslexia or not and things like that so it's easier if I read to him or if I read them and then give him a synopsis and we talk about the key points because with the summer it's just waffle and that sort of stuff um not every single word is useful and I'm very good at kind of picking out those bits so like we would have a conversation about it we also used um the first for adoption first steps interactive platform and again i've put a link to that in the description um it's kind of like a online learning thing so you read the case studies you answer and then you do some quizzes and then it grades you and i love receiving a grade so i was like yeah let's do this um and yeah i really really like that we haven't got all the way through yet but there's some really like some of the case studies are really sad and some of them echo <laughs> some of them echo my experiences as a child so those were a bit tricky to read and I thought I wouldn't find them tricky like I've done all of them I've done I've done the therapy and I've done all the work and some of them was like oh my gosh that sudden realization that it happens to other people as well and it's happening to people now it's happening to children little children who could potentially be my child like that it's happened potentially happening to them right now the things that I went through and um yeah a couple of times when i was reading them through it was like oh ow um and it wasn't like an owl for me because i'm a big girl and you know i've done a lot a lot of work and it's an ongoing process but it was like a like a sadness of realizing that there were other people who had been through it and there are other people that are going through it and that in so many families it's a cycle that just continues um and that's kind of very similar for my family like going back it's um there was a bit of a, a chain there's a long line that ends with me thankfully um but not everyone is able to to stop that not everyone everyone has the tools to be able to say okay we're done here this is it the buck stops here we're, no more no the chain ends um and um yeah so some of those it was a bit it was a bit hard and we would stop for a second and we would talk about it um, we're gonna run out of space on my camera one second. Um, yeah, so we would sit, we'd talk about it for a bit, talk about how I felt, talk about how Phil felt, and then continue on. Um, and I think that's a really valuable thing to have is, is just to be, you know, we're very good at communicating with each other. <sighs> Sorry. <sighs> um, very good at communicating with each other. I think able to support each other through hard things, like that's a really big deal. So, um, yeah, we were just doing that. So that's another one um the other thing is youtube channels those were an amazing thing for me they literally kept me going over the last two years as i found them um some of them are american channels there are a couple of channels that i found that are american and now i watch them all the time and it's not really adoption content anymore but i've just enjoyed watching them um and then there's quite a few uk adoption channels now um that are all like we're a home education channel or basically you know that's all we really talk about apart from this i'm sorry i'm just trying to get the laptop to charge there you go um oh, for fluff's sake we need a new laptop um yeah so <clears throat> we there's some home education channels sorry i'm just really distracted today um and adopt with nairi adoption with nairi i can't remember what her channel is actually called adopt with nairi um she's one that i really really love and she just has this really like soothing and gentle voice that like i call it a mum voice like she just makes me feel <laughs> makes me feel really good about myself just like listening to her um one of those people who are like i bet i bet if she was my mum she would be amazing like that kind of thing um she just has one of those really soothing comforting voices and uh, even from having really rubbish she like makes you believe you can do anything and i love it i love it bits i think she's awesome um um also amy vlog or amy vlog whatever you want to refer to her channel as she's another really good one that's all adoption based and that shows a lot of like adoption family life after adoption as well now um like oh it's normal we have to account for a few different things but it's normal um and that's really really good also molly mama adopt really really like her um she's always really chirpy and smiley and i'm like it's just one of those people that seems to cheer you up and the other one i really like is daddy dad and me um yeah they're just really again really comforting and supporting and just yeah one of those youtube channels that you watch if you're having a bad day and then you watch them and you're like i feel better about myself now <laughs> um so i would suggest that you binge watch 
all of those people which is what i've done and i still do like i've watched all of their videos but i still go back and watch them again like i have playlists that i've made sorry playlists that i've made and then i just go back and watch them um and even though I've heard them again, it's good to like re-cement those things in my brain. They might say, oh, 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 I've missed a book that they suggested. I'll read that. Or, oh, they've mentioned another YouTube channel. I'll read them. The other thing is finding as many um, adoption Instagram channels if you can. If you're on Instagram, like whack those Instagram. This hair, hair is driving me insane. Um, whack, whack, you know, just search adoption community. Um, my adoption instagram is adoption all the way like adventure all the way um and all of the ones that i'm following they're all really really good so if you want to like just click on who i'm following and be like click 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 click, that would be really good i only follow adoption i only follow adoption channels on there um except a few personal friends who have like popped on and i followed them back um but yeah mostly it's um it's adoption channels adoption like handles on there so i really enjoy um those um i don't think there was anything else usually the other thing we did and we are still doing is decluttering like decluttering 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 all the time because i hear stories about some children who come from foster care or from if you're from foster adopt from birth families and they come with a lot of stuff um mainly if they're from foster care not usually if they're from birth families from what i've heard and what i've been told um like they'll come with everything all of their toys all of their clothes all of the things and then some that come with like a medium amount and some that come with like just the bare essentials so it's really hard my battery's about to die really hard not to like everything to see i'm like oh that's free oh i'll put that in the pile or, oh that's really cheap i'll put that in the pile oh i'll go into that charity shop oh it's a lovely onesie and all of that sort of thing but i'm just decluttering other stuff we don't need so there'll be room for other stuff um for baby stuff Anyway, that's just my little quick update and what we've done to prepare so far. Um, I will, I'm gonna talk about the books we read and show them all to you in the next week's vlog. So I will see you then. And hopefully my face won't look like I've been punched. 